roads now. Hi, Russell. Hi, Russell. Hey, hey, so Bill. nice to meet you. Thank you so much for joining us and giving us some of your time today. Uh, I'm a native Chicagoan. Uh, uh, I used to trade at the CME when it was above uh, Union Station. So I'm a dinosaur, Russell. Uh, I've heard of your work for quite some time. I, I've told our community about your background, that you're a senior instructor at the Options Institute at SIBO. Is uh, the SIBO floor still pretty busy, Russell, compared to, you know, I went back a year ago and all the futures pits were empty at the CME. And uh, all the action, though, in commodities is in the options pit. So is the SIBO still pretty active? Um, you know, when I take, and, and I do take people around the floor pretty frequently, uh, I kind of divide it up into thirds. And one third, there's nothing going on, and that's where they're trading the stock options. I mean, there's something going on, but it's all okay. electronic. Um, we've got a VIX pit that's got about 80 or 90 that's, people in it that's actually pretty, yeah, pretty that's active. Busy. Yeah, and, and actually I'm sitting right on top of the VIX pit, so if you hear anything, that actually means a big trade went through okay. there. And then got about 250 people in the SPX pit where we trade S S&P index right. options, because about 90% of that volume is still done open outcry. So th there still is something it, to see It's the last bastion and, on the, of open, of, of open yeah. outcry, isn't it? It really is. Thank it God really something is. survived uh, the Internet. I'm, I'm happy about that, Russell. Uh, you're a prolific writer, too. Uh, you wrote a book that I qualify to read. It's uh, Candlestick Charting for Dummies. So, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> considering myself uh, a candlestick dummy, uh, I'm going to take a look at that. And uh, you've written books, uh, Doing It the Buffett Way, The Warren Buffett Way, Third Edition, and uh, today you're going to be talking about the VIX. I think it's timely to talk about the VIX. Actually, I bought some October 18s right here, the calls. And um, what I'm hearing for months now, Russell, and tell me if you agree, the VIX is broken. The VIX is ar archaic. It doesn't work. It's not a good hedge. And when I start hearing things like that an instrument is broken, it makes me think that it's just not been a performing asset for people, and that's why they're saying it. And its time has not come yet. Similar to what they were saying about gold in 2000, that mm -hmm. it was an archaic relic that would never have a place in a uh, portfolio again. Uh, what camp do you fall in uh, on as far as the VIX being broken? Our Cashin said that. I, I, yeah, I I know he said that. Um, it's not necessarily broken. It's just at the lower end of where it's been historically. And uh, did you want me to share maybe a chart that yeah, shows sure. that? Yeah, go, uh, go to your well. screen share. Okay. okay. And share screen. Then let me pull this guy up. This is something that I did in reaction to, uh, to that very comment. Okay, so that... Uh that stirred up a little something in you too when you heard it that it was broken. Of course. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that, that Vix is so near and dear to me that my wife yelled at me once saying that I should that if Vix were a woman I'd be married to it. So I uh, I, I am very sensitive about something like that. Yes. Are you seeing the uh, the historical perspective yes. chart? Okay. Well, I, what I did was I took a one, five, and ten year rolling uh, average. Of VIX because we do have VIX data going back to actually uh, 1986, okay. the year before the year before and the crash. You can see that. You know, uh huh. We intentionally wanted to include the crash where I think VIX got up to a 120 or 130 intraday, wow. uh, based and it was based on the OEX right. back then because uh, that was the more active active market. But I, I just took you know the the rolling averages, and you can see even the the, the one year average, the blue line that, that has a dramatic move up that coincides with what happened in two thousand eight. 
uh, we're we're kind of we're near the lower end where we were in 2006 and 2007. We actually haven't broken those lows, even when you're using a rolling average or an or an absolute level. Where were, of and where would those be? Where were they in 2006, seven? Oh, what, you know what? Uh, were they under ten? Excellent. Uh, Excellent. We had readings anyway. under ten. There okay. we are, right there. Uh, that, well, it's 2005 and 2006. The average, because we started to, to have some rumblings with, with respect to Bear Stearns in two, right. 2007. Had some moves up to X. But you can see, that, and this, this average um, for 2014 is through uh, August 15th. So it's pretty recent. But you can see that the, the average, and I think the average level for VIX is more important than you know, the absolute uh, year over year change or that sort of thing, because it's a range bound measure. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see that the uh, we've had basically, uh, we've had a little bit higher high than we had last year, a little bit lower low than we had last year as right. well. Um, it's it's not broken, it's just, uh, we're just in a different environment. What, what do you think is uh, lurking out there that could change the environment? Uh, you know, it, I, I think it's a combination of eventually the the Fed's going to have to raise rates, and if I were going to have to guess what's going to cause that, I would say we're going to start to see some pockets of inflation. Whether it's because commodity prices go up because of geopolitical situations, or we just continue to see the economy start to grow, but when when you really do when it when a rate hike becomes some sort of a certainty. I do think that the the stock market's probably not going to react well to that. You'll probably see a, a move higher in VIX based okay. on that. And then the the thing that'll get us moving to the upside quickly is you know the one of those unknowns that might pop up, and we can we you know we could say an expansion of the problems that are going on in the Middle East right now, or you know. Uh, we start to hit winter time, and Russia decides to basically. Yeah. Yeah, cut the heat off to Europe. Uh, do you, um, do you get any kind of market tell? I pay attention to things like this, Russell, that um, the highs we made in the S&Ps up around 1990 before we had that 90 handle pullback was about 1050 or so. And we're making new highs and we haven't printed under 11 that the market's making new highs, but the VIX is making higher lows. Anything to that? They, that usually is a pretty good indicator that uh, that, that the end is near. Uh, the thing with with the VIX low this year at, at um, eleven or ten thirty two. Why is ten thirty? Um, with with VIX at ten thirty two, that was actually a level that was put in um, before the three and a half day Independence Day holiday. Okay. So when we have a price like that, um, the, the days to expiration, when there are extra days off between today and the days to expiration, that can actually have a, uh, it can weigh on the VIX okay, a little so bit. Okay, so there's some type of uh, time erosion on it? Right, okay. right. Um, what do you think is the best way to make uh, bets in the VIX? Uh, do you... You do it with volatility at extreme low levels. Uh, you're still in the camp that you have to write something because of time erosion. If you wanted to take a bullish position in there, some type of vertical bull spread, something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I tend to, um, you know, I, I you, you continually have to think about. Uh, VIX options with respect to the corresponding futures yes. contracts, and you know, you you mentioned the the um, October um, options. Well, the October options are being priced off of a um, basically off of an underlying market that's at fourteen ten right now, even though VIX is at eleven fifty five. So you know, you, VIX needs to overcome that spread between the future and and then continue higher for you know any of the uh, the any of the October calls to really start to work for you. So I think that 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 just adds to the expense of, of options that are okay. So they're expensive because they're based on a high volatility so market. The October options. So you do want to. Okay. I do think you need to sell some okay. green. Um, 
Anything else you wanted to uh, share with us today? You have this fixed presentation that you're going to do later today. Uh, um, the difference between perhaps yeah. retailers using it. Okay, closing prices by handle. Okay. I was just gonna. Um, I was gonna fast forward to. Uh, and what there it is, an information slide. Just uh, what we're doing over the next three days yes. here. We're doing. We're doing a webcast series at noon Chicago time, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And it really is the very basics of VIX to start out on today. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, just the price behavior of the futures and the options tomorrow. And then touching on what you, you brought up, I'm going to talk about how bullish trades on VIX are very different than bearish trades on VIX. And you know some of the common ways that I see the guys in the pit taking a bullish or a bearish position. Can you share a little bit, uh, give us a preview on that, on how the guys in the pit make their bullish and bearish bets on this instrument? Absolutely. Let me uh, fast forward. Give us a preview to, to your webinar. So everyone that's interested in learning uh, about the VIX, uh, you have a webinar opportunity with Russell over the next three days. Now, this, one, this is one that that somebody comes in and does every month, um, where they uh, they'll sell some sort of um, slightly up slight upside straddle, and then buy a farther out of the money call option. But I see this trade fairly frequently, and they do it between five and ten thousand times. Uh, this is one that they did back in March when when VIX was at a little bit lower levels uh, than than where the straddle is. But this is the really interesting part of it is. Uh, you know they're they're looking they're, they're going to benefit as long as VIX is above 14. They do have some downside risk in this, but you know they're targeting uh, VIX moving up. You know basically in this case the 17 level, and if we get one of those true um, volatility events that takes VIX you know much higher, maybe into the mid 20s, they still benefit from from this trade. But see a lot of uh, straddle selling. There's another one on here. This is another thing that we see an awful lot of um, because you can, well, I'll go back to what the trade was. Uh, somebody bought the Feb 16 calls, sold the Feb 20 calls, and sold the Feb 13 puts as well. And one of the things that's kind of interesting about this trade is, see, I stopped the payoff diagram down here at 10. Yeah. Well, we haven't seen... We, we, in all of history, we've only seen VIX below 10 just a handful of times. So I think the option guys kind of will will take 10 as an absolute floor into account when they're thinking about doing a trade like this and not necessarily worry about buying downside protection. And now, that's not to say that VIX can't go below um, 10, but you would think with the S&P hitting 2,000 that... It should be there uh, now. After, yeah, yeah. yeah. You would think if it were going to happen, it would be happening right now instead of VIX up slightly. So Okay. Well, yeah, that's interesting. That's, yeah. I mean, the cost is uh, $0.15. Yeah. Cents. What's upside potential for them on a trade like this? Uh, upside potential on this one, I think, could go to um, 385 oh, so you're talking about a 30-41 uh, profit risk ratio on that. Right. Okay, so, right. yeah, that, it, it, that shows what you can do. Uh, using combinations in the options to reduce your cost and and be there for a directional bet. And the risk on and the yeah. total risk on the trade is only fifteen yeah. cents. Or if the VIX fell to ten, they'd have exposure on the put they wrote. Well, the risk. Right, right. So it, you could say that the exposure is three fifteen if if we got a big dip in volatility. Okay. Well, Russell, I want to thank you and great timing for us to talk today right in front of your webinar. I encourage everyone yep. to uh, attend it and learn about an instrument that both Russell and I don't think is broken and uh, may be <laughs> about to pull a Lazarus on us. How about rising from the dead in the VIX? That, that's usually what it does. I might have to steal that one from you as well. All right, I, like that uh, I have no copyright on it. Go ahead. Pleasure meeting you, Russell. All right, thanks a lot. I appreciate right. being on. Yeah, good hunting, my friend. Thank you. All right, thanks.